Okay, so the next question that we have here is 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 uh, actually an interesting question and pretty useful in and I'm meaning that you can use it in many different situations. So we want to show that we want to show that you want to show that the area of the triangle that the area of the triangle formed by the lines formed by the lines by the lines y is equal to m1 x plus c1 and y is equal to m2 x plus c2 and x is equal to zero x is equal to zero is nothing but the but the y-axis itself is is basically c1 minus c2 all squared over two times the the absolute value of m1 minus m2 m1 minus m2 so this is this this could be any line really meaning that you have suppose that you have for example some line over here y is equal to m1 y is equal to m1 m1 x plus c1 so you can imagine that you could have for example some line like this and y is equal to m2 x plus c2 which could be for example this line over here and x is equal to zero which is basically the, the y-axis itself so then this triangle that 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 is formed over here by these three lines the area of this triangle the area of this triangle is given by c1 minus c2 whole squared over two times the absolute value of m1 minus m2 which you could basically use in many different types of situations, of course. Now, what I need to do here in order to, in order to find the, in order to find, let's, let's suppose that, for example, this line over here is y is equal to m2, m2 x plus c2, and let's suppose that this y, this line is y is equal to m1 x plus c1. And of course, this is the line x is equal to zero or the y axis. Or the y axis. So what I need to do is basically we had a, we had a, a formula for this type of situation, which was basically um, we said that the area of the triangle we said that the area we said that the area of the of the triangle of the triangle whose vertices are with basically with vertices with vertices x1, y1, x2, y2, x2, y2, and x3, y3 is given by is given by is given by one half times the absolute value of x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x2 times y3 minus y1 plus x3 times uh, y1 minus y3 y1 minus I'm sorry y2 minus y3 y3 minus y1 y1 minus y2 okay so the so the area of the triangle the area of the triangle having these three 
having these three vertices as x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 is given by this formula. So now we can, if, if I can figure out the three, the three vertices of these lines, then I can put it in this, I can put it in this formula over here and, uh, and basically find the general way of finding such a triangle. And then the, the interesting thing about this is that, and, and, and I mean the, the magical thing really about um, algebra really is that and the whole of mathematics how it's 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 really how it's it how it how it's really basically interconnected with the whole of mathematics is that then you can just keep moving these lines around and then the algebra will take care of that for you without any and you don't have to worry about the thing and then you can simply have basically a simple formula like this and then no matter what sort of line you have what sort of lines you have over here you can just keep moving these lines around and then still you can you're you're able to find the area of the triangle using a simple formula that's that's actually well pretty amazing so so now what I want to do is just find the, for example, the, the point of intersection of, let's, let's find this point over here first. For example, let's say that you have, you have a line over here, y is equal to m2x plus c2, and you have another line x is equal to 0. The point of intersection of these two lines, which is basically the vertex, one vertex of this triangle, is therefore given by if I set x is equal to 0 in this formula I get y is equal to c2 that means that that means that the point of intersection the the the, the, the coordinates of this point are x is equal to 0 and y is equal to c2 so x is equal to 0 and y is equal to c2 the point of intersection of these two lines Based on this, you can say that, of course, the, the, your y, your x over here is, is again equal to zero and your y, your, your y coordinates is c1. Because that's the, that's the y intercept of this line. And there is only one thing that we need to figure out over here, which is this vertex, which is a little bit complicated compared to these two which is um, basically these two lines, meaning that this line and this line over here, so you have y is equal to m1x plus c1, and you have y is equal to m2x plus c2. So once you have these two lines over here, so you can basically You can use the cross multiplication method, which I would like to go back and see what that was, but I have forgotten that. Mm. But let's let's see if we can actually find the the solutions of these of these two of these two basically of these two equations. Y is equal to m one x plus c one, and if you I mean, I would have to write it, of course, as I would have to write this as basically y minus m1x minus c1 is equal to 0 and y minus m2x, this is m2x and c2, m2x minus c2 is equal to 0. And then if I, if I basically, if I subtract this equation from this equation, I get negative, positive, positive, and then add them together. So these two would cancel out. You have basically a negative, you have negative m1x plus m2x plus m2x uh, plus c2 minus c1 is equal to zero. That means that basically x times 
x times m2 minus m1 plus c2 minus c1 is equal to 0. That means that x is equal to, well, you could write it as, you could write this as x times m2 minus m1 is equal to, basically, here you have c2 minus c1, there you would have c1 minus c2, c1 minus c2, and so um, x is equal to, basically, c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1. 2 minus m1. So this is your x and so if I use any of these equations over here for example for example if y is equal to if y is equal to basically I'm sorry if if, if you have if you have y minus m1 x minus c1 is equal to 0 m1 x minus c1 is equal to 0 and then you can uh, you can you can put x over here so y minus m1 times m1 times c1 minus c2 c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1 um, so minus c1 is equal to 0 and and then you can, and this was m1, of course. And so you can write this as, uh, you can write this as y minus m1 times c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1 minus c1 is equal to 0. And then you can say that y is equal to basically take both of these to the other side of the equation. m1 times c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1 plus c. So if you add these two together, you'll get y is equal to m2 minus m1. And over here, you get m1 times c1 minus c2 plus and this is supposed to be c1 of course this is supposed to be c1 so so y is equal to m1 times c2 minus c1 plus c1 times m2 minus m1 c1 times m2 minus m1 that is basically your y so And of course, it gets a little bit complicated. So that is your x and that is your y. That is your x and that is your y. Now let's see if we can actually do something with this because this is a long... This is m1c1, m1c1. I think we can simplify this. Let's see if we can simplify this. If I do some multiplication here I get I get m1 c1 minus m1 c2 plus c1 m2 minus m1 c1 over m2 minus m1 and m1 c2 but over here I have m1 c1 m1 c1 and you can cancel these two out. And this is M1C2, this is M2C1. So I can write this as um, uh, basically M2C1, M2C1 minus M1C2 over M2 minus M1. And this is your Y. And then what we what we can do is that and your x is equal to the c1 minus c2 your x is your x is basically your x is c1 minus c2 c1 minus c2 over 
m2 minus m1 m2 minus m1 this is your x okay so now the so this is the point of intersection of these two lines which is basically this point over here this point over here so we had 0 comma c2 0 comma c1 0 comma c2 and 0 comma 0 comma c1 over here as well now the formula for the for the for the for the area of the triangle was area of i don't know let's let's write it area of the area just simply the area is equal to one half times the absolute value of times the absolute value of x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x2 times uh, y3 minus y3 minus y1 plus x3 times y1 minus y2 and that's basically your the formula that you have now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to take this this point this this is actually this is a point i'm going to take this point as point one for example meaning x1 y1 i'm going to take this as point two i'm going to take this as point three so so this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 this is x3 y3 so then my area is going to be one half times the absolute value of x1 so x1 is basically this 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 thing over here which is c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1 times y2 minus y3 y2 is basically is basically um, c2 and y3 is equal to c1 so that's c2 minus c1 c2 minus c1 so i don't want to make any mistakes here so x1 is basically this c1 minus c2 over m2 minus m1 and y2 minus y3 is c2 minus c1 plus x2 which is equal to zero is equal to zero here and x3 is and x3 is also zero here so we don't really need to bother about these about these over here so so what what we have is that basically one half the absolute value of um this is c1 minus c2 c2 minus c1 so you have a minus b times b minus a a minus b times b minus a is something that a b minus a squared minus b squared plus a b so it's the same thing as is the same thing as negative a squared negative b squared plus two times a b and we wanted to show that we we wanted to show that because i guess we need to do some some arrangements over here so i can write this as I can write this as negative basically take a negative sign out a squared plus b squared minus 2ab and that is that is the same thing as a plus b whole squared I'm sorry it is the same thing as a minus b whole squared so I can write this as the absolute value of of, of a minus b whole square so that's um, that is basically c1 minus c2 that is c1 minus c2 
all squared but with a negative sign over here and the denominator is m2 minus m1 okay so what that means is that if you have a minus b times b minus a that is actually the same thing as negative a minus b whole squared that is what that means so So the area now let's see let me see what what we have over here two times okay so what what we have over here is c c1 minus c2 whole squared over two times i need to need to make a screenshot here let's see what i can do with that thing down there so I can write this as, of course, I can write this as basically, I can write this, this thing as basically C1 minus C2 all squared and forget about the negative sign because it's in, in, in an absolute value function and this is definitely going to be positive all the time. So I don't need to worry about that. And then over here, I have the absolute value of m2 minus m1. And I can put the 2 over here. And that is basically the area, the area of the, the area of that triangle. And we wanted to show the same thing, basically. So that means that if you have, that means that if you have a, if you have a triangle formed by the lines y is equal to m1, m1 x plus c1 and y is equal to m2 x plus c2 and x is equal to 0 if the triangle is formed by these lines then the area of the triangle is going to be given by this equation which is c1 minus c2 all squared over 2 times the absolute value of m2 minus m1 or over here we had m doesn't really matter this is m2 minus m1 or m1 minus m2 at the end of the day you're going to get the same number because because suppose that for example suppose that you have two numbers like 2 and basically 2 and 4 for example if you take this as a and b um, you can of course you know that a minus b the absolute value of a minus b is equal to the absolute value of b minus a b minus a for example if you write the absolute value of 2 minus 4 it's equal to the absolute value of 4 minus 2 2 minus 4 is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 this is the absolute value of 2 and so 2 is equal to 2 so it doesn't really matter whether you write m2 minus m1 or m1 minus h m2 so that that doesn't really make any much any difference so that is basically that now there is one two more questions here and I suppose I was on page 26 So the next question that we have is a line is such that its segment between between the lines is bisected at the point one one comma five. Obtain its equation. Okay, so okay, so the next question that we have here is a line is such that its segment that its segment between the line between two lines is bisected at point one comma five. So um, 
basically is the question is a line in such that its segment between the two between the lines basically 5x minus y plus 4 is equal to 0 and 3x plus 4y 3x plus 4y minus 4 is equal to 0 so there is a line and some segment of there is some segment of this line there is some segment of that line that is between these two lines and this this segment is is bisected at point at point one comma five and you want to find the equation of that line now in order to understand what's going on what you can do is that you can basically draw these two lines and see what what they look like so for example if i call this one and if i call this two then the, this one over here number one gives me basically negative y is equal to negative 5x minus 4 or y is equal to 5x plus 4 so then basically the, the y-intercept of the line is 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the, the, the slope of the line is 5. That means that 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I have uh, the, 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 the y-intercept is 4. So it's this point over here. And since the slope is, is 5, 5 basically means 5 to 1. That means that for one horizontal change, you have 5 units of vertical change. So, one horizontal change and 5 units of vertical change. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, you would, you would end up over here. And then this is going to be the line that you're looking for. So, this, this, this is the equation of the line. This is the equation of the line. This is number one. Okay. Now, number two. Number two is basically, I can write this as basically 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. And y is equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So that means that the y-intercept is positive 1. And the slope is negative 3 fourths. So negative 3 fourths mean, means that for 4 units of horizontal change, you have negative 3 units of vertical change. So, so I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for 4 units of 1, 2, 3, and 4 units of horizontal change, you have negative 3, 1, 2, and 3. Negative 3 units of basically horizontal change so i'm sorry vertical change so we have this point over here this line over here and this is point number two now the point that that we were talking about is one comma five which is one two three four and five so this is the this is the point that we are talking about. And since that portion, that segment of of that line that we want to there is basically there is a line between these two lines somewhere over here. And um, that line is basically being bisected and is bisected at at this point meaning that meaning that basically the you have to basically you have to you basically have to find some point over here on this line number one which has some distance from this point and and then you have some point over here which has basically some distance on this point on this line and then those two distances have to be the same now the way that you can do it is that
Now let me think about this. Okay, so now I uh, I actually did think about this for a few moments. Actually, like five, ten minutes, five minutes. I was just thinking about this, but I couldn't really find a solution. But when the, the solution that I see in the text over here is actually very interesting, meaning that. And of course, you see the the line segment that you're that you're looking for could be could be anything like this, for example. It could be, for example, any anything like this, for example. Now, of course, this is not this is not a good uh, a uh, good example, but something, for example, that the line segment has to pass through this point. Which is one comma one two three four five, and it has to some somehow go go through this this point and then touch the other point as well. I mean, touch the other line as well. Now, of course, you see since this is the midpoint over here. So since one comma five is the midpoint. Since one comma five is the midpoint, these two points, this point and and basically the, um, I don't know. You can, for example, call this distance, for example, uh, m and n and for example p. M n is supposed to be equal to m n is supposed to be equal to m p. And then you want to also find out the, the equation of this line. So there is no way to, there is really, I mean, you do have, you do need to have a good strategy to find the solution here. Because, uh, because if you, because as you, as you keep changing the, the slope of this line, then of course these line segments between M and P then between M and N are going the length of these two segments are going to change with respect to line one and line two. And so there has to be some some spot over here where the where M N is actually equal to M P and that's basically the right uh, uh the right uh, basically the right uh, slope for this line. So that that's what we want to find. Now the solution that I that I read over here, and I haven't basically read the whole thing yet, but but it is um, let basically I, I I can call this point over here. I can call the coordinates of this point P. I can call them alpha one and beta one. Alpha one and beta one, then the coordinates of this point I can call alpha two, alpha two and beta two, alpha two and beta two. So we can say that let let the required line in line let the required line line intersect the line one and two at at these two points at point alpha one beta one and alpha 2 beta 2 meaning that this this line is basically intersecting this line and this line at these two points so since uh, alpha 1 beta 1 is on line is on the line 1 is basically lies on on, on the line 1 you can write you can write basically so alpha 1 is the x coordinate beta 1 is the y coordinate you can you can write 5 times alpha 1 minus beta 1 plus 4 is equal to 0. And also since alpha 2 beta 2 lies on this line, lies, lies on this on the, on the line 2, then you can, you can say that you can put alpha 2 beta 2 in equation number 2 and write 3 times alpha 2, 3 times alpha 2 plus 4 times beta 2, Minus four is equal to is equal to zero, and uh, or you can say that or you can say that beta one 
or you can say that based on this you can say that beta 1 is equal to take this to the other side 5 times alpha 1 5 times alpha 1 plus 4 and beta 2 and then based on this you can say that 4 times 4 times beta 2 4 times beta 2 is equal to negative 3 alpha 2 plus 4 and so beta 2 is equal to is equal to negative 3 fourths alpha 2 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1 um, or you can basically write this as and they have written this as basically um, 4 over 4 and that is negative 3 times alpha 2 negative 3 times alpha 2 over 4 plus plus 1 which is equal to which is basically 4 over 4 so we can write these two these two equations now um, now we are given that the that the midpoint of the segment of the required line between alpha 1 beta 1 and alpha 2 beta 2 between these two lines the midpoint of this the midpoint of this is 1 comma 5 that's basically what we assumed so that means that that means that we can say that uh, basically um, since uh, since basically over here you have alpha 1 which is the the x coordinate and this is alpha 2 which is again the x the x coordinate and the x coordinate which is related to the midpoint is 1 so i can say that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided by 2 the midpoint of that i can say alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 because 1 is the the x coordinate of the midpoint of these two points and also i can say that beta 1 plus beta 2 divided by 2 is equal to 5 beta 1 plus beta 2 divided by 2 is equal to 5 so so that this one over here i just uh, i have to basically be able to follow the solution over there so i, I might write this a little bit out of order but hopefully you will understand the solution so that mean, this means that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 2 cross multiply and and so and so over here beta 1 So over here I can write alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 2 and over here I can write and this is alpha this is alpha so this beta 1 is beta 1 plus beta 1 divided by 2 over here we had beta 2 is equal to basically 4 minus 3 times alpha 2 5 alpha 1 plus 4 plus somewhere over here we had something related to related to beta 1 beta 2 5 alpha 1 plus 4 so beta 1 plus beta 2 divided by 2 is equal to 10 so this 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 part over here is equal to 2 and then over here i can write 5 alpha 1 plus 4 and 4 plus okay so i can now i can well it's it's a little bit complicated i mean the way that you have to substitute these in one another but but hopefully it will make sense to you as well because i'm also trying to follow this the solution so over here instead of beta 1 and beta 2 i can write these two expressions so i can write basically um, 5 times 5 times alpha 1 plus 4 plus uh, plus basically 4 minus 4 minus 3 times alpha 2 alpha 2 divided by 4 is equal to 
is equal to 5 is equal to 5 Or here you can say that alpha 1 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 2 so we don't need to do anything to this one but this one we can simplify a little bit meaning that I can write 5 times alpha 1 plus 4 plus plus um, well if I uh, basically if I take an LCM 4 over here I will get uh, I will get basically LCM4, so 4 times 5 is equal to 20 alpha 1 plus 16 plus 16 plus 4 minus 3 times alpha 2 and that's equal to 5 and so that is basically 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 16 plus 4 is equal to 20 divided by 4 or divided by 2 is equal to 5 and so you can write this as now as 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 plus 20 over 8 is equal to 5 and then you can cross multiply here I write it up here and then you can write 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 plus 20 is equal to 40 is equal to 40 and so uh, 3 times alpha 2 plus 20 so 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 is equal to 40 minus 20 is equal to 20 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 is equal to 20. So this is basically what remains of this one over here. So I just erase all of this. Don't want to confuse you. So what remains of this is basically 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 is equal to 20. So now what we have is 20 times alpha 1 minus 3 times alpha 2 is equal to 20 and alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to is equal to 2 is equal to 2 now uh, solving equations in 3 for alpha 1 and alpha 2 so you need to now solve these equations for alpha 1 and alpha 2 so we have 20 alpha 1 minus 3 alpha 2 is equal to 20 and I also have this one over here alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 2 so if I write I can from this I can I can write alpha 1 is equal to for example 2 minus alpha 2 and then put it in here so then that, that is 20 times 22 minus alpha 2 um, minus 3 times alpha 2 is equal to 20 so that's 40 40 minus 20 alpha 2 minus 3 alpha 2 is equal to 20 and um, that is basically negative 23 times alpha 2 is equal to negative 20 and these two you can cancel out alpha 2 is equal to 20 by 23 alpha 2 is equal to 20 by 23 so this is one answer that we can use and then alpha 1 over here we said that alpha 1 is equal to is equal to 2 minus alpha 2 so then alpha 1 is equal to is equal to 2 minus 20 by 23 so that is basically that is basically um, that is basically 23 that is 46 minus 20 which is equal to 46 minus 20 is equal to 26 by 23 so alpha 1 is equal to 26 by 20 by 23 which is correct so what that means is that so let me write down these answers and then basically over here I 
erase all of this and so what this means is that basically alpha 1 is equal to 26 by 23 and alpha 2 is equal to 20 by 23 these are alpha 1 and alpha 2 and I suppose um, then somehow we need to get to beta 1 and beta 2 so over here if I'm if I if we can do this so beta 1 for example is is this thing over here so beta 1 is this thing over here and so beta 1 is equal to 5 times alpha 1 plus 4 alpha 1 plus 4 and beta 2 is equal to 4 over 4 minus 3 times alpha 2 over 4 so now that we have the value of these two we can write we can therefore we can therefore write beta 1 is equal to 5 times alpha 1 so 5 times 26 by 23 plus 4 now this is equal to 5 times 26 is 33 10 13 130 by 23 100 130 by 23 plus 4 and that is equal to and that is equal to basically 130 and here you have 23 and 4 times 23 is equal to 23 times 4 is equal to 12 1 8 92 so 92 plus 130 is equal to is equal to 2, 12, and 2, 222 by 23. 222 by 23. So that means that beta 1 is equal to 222 by 23. And uh, beta 2, and beta 2 is equal to, is equal to 4, alpha 2 is equal to 20 by 23. So that's 4 minus 3 times 20 by 23 over 4 so that's equal to 4 minus 4 minus 60 60 by 23 over 4 and so you have basically um, over here you have 23 23 times 4 is equal to 12 1 8 92 92 minus 60 over 4 which is equal to 32 over 32 over 23 over over 4 now 4 times 23 is equal to 92 so that's 32 by 92 I suppose It's 32 and 23 times 4. 23 times 4 is equal to 92. So beta 2 is equal to, so this is 32 by 92. We can simplify this as, we can simplify this as 16 and 46 and 8. And 23, 8 to 23. So beta 2 is equal to, it means that beta 2 is equal to 8 to 23. Okay, so now basically what we need to do, we have beta 1, beta 2, alpha 1, alpha 2. So um, the so now we are looking for the equation of this line. Now basically you have these two points over here, alpha one, alpha one, beta one, which is equal to basically twenty six by 23 comma basically 222 by 23 
And that is basically one point on this line. The other point on the line is alpha 2, beta 2, which is equal to, which is equal to basically 20 by 23, comma, 8 by 23. 8 by 23. So now, using these two points, you can calculate the slope of this line, which is basically, um, you can take this as basically, you know that m is equal to uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 over x2 minus x1. And so that is equal to basically um, 8 by 23. 8 by 23 minus 8 20 thirds, 8 20 thirds minus 222 20 thirds, and 20 20 thirds minus 26 20 thirds. That is equal to basically 222 minus 8 is equal to what? 222 minus 8. So that is a 1, that is a 12, that's 4, 1, 214, that's negative 214, 20 thirds. And over here you have 20 minus 26, which is equal to negative 6 by 23. You can cancel these two out, cancel these two out. And um, basically 214 divided by 6 is equal to... 214 divided by 6, so 214 divided by 2, so that is 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So 214 divided by 2 is equal to, uh, by 2 is equal to 107, 107, and then this is 3 over here. And uh, so this is equal to 107 to 3. So your m is equal to 107 to 3. And and so now you can write y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So you can take any any of these two points. For example, I will pick this one. It's easier, simpler. So y minus 8 by 23 is equal to 107 to 107 thirds times x minus x1, which is equal to 20, 20 thirds. And so what you will get is, what you will get is basically um, y minus 8 by 8 20 thirds is equal to 107 thirds x minus uh, basically 107 times 20 107 times 20 divided by divided by 3 times 23 and um, well, let me clear these up. Okay, so so now this equation you can write it as uh, basically um, if you take everything to one side of the equation, you will get y minus one hundred seven by 3 times x and over here you have this thing over here which is which is basically negative 8 by 23 plus this goes to the other side becomes plus 107 times 20 divided by divided by um, 3 times 3 times 23 So you can write this as uh, 
basically 3 times 23 LCM and 3 times 8 is equal to negative 24 plus plus um, 107 times 20 which is equal to which is equal to well um, 107 times 20 107 times 20 is equal to well you have let's, let's say times 2 for example 107 times 2 is equal to and 0 over here you have 2714 2 and of course you have a 0 over here so you have 2140 minus 24 minus 24 so you have basically a 3 over here, a 10 over here, so that's a 6, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 6 is equal to 2, 1, 1, 6 over 3 times 23. Now, this is 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, and 3 times 23 is equal to, I don't know, 23 times 3 is equal to 9, and 69. I don't even know if that's divisible by any chance. 2116 divided by 69. 92 thirds. So this becomes 92 thirds. Well, this, my calculator tells me 92 thirds. So I can write this as, as positive positive 92 thirds is equal to zero and so what I can do now what I can do now is multiply everything by a factor of 3 meaning that 3y minus 107 x plus 92 is equal to zero and uh, or I can write basically negative 107x plus 3y plus 92 is equal to 0 and and it is better to basically multiply by a negative 1 so, so, so you don't have the negative 107 over here so you'll get 107x minus 3y minus 92 is equal to 0 that is basically that is the equation of your line. Now, well, we did solve the problem, and um, and of course, uh, um, well, of course, we can go over here and 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 find these points over here and and basically draw this line meaning that we know our, our alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 over here. It's 26, 23, some, some, something like, um, something like, uh, um, basically, let me calculate this thing over here. If you have 26, 26, 23, that's 1.1 approximately. This is 1.1 approximately. These are all the approximations. And 222 divided by 23 is equal to approximately 9.6. Approximately 9.6. And 2023 is equal to 2023 is equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 approximately. And and 823 is zero point is zero point three approximately. So this point over here one point one nine point six one point one nine point six so that is one two three four five six seven eight nine nine point six would be some some place over here and and the other point is 0 0.9, 0 0.3. So 0 0.9, 0 0.3 would be some exactly some point over here. And that would be your line. Now this is not that important. Basically important is to understand the, the, 
the procedure that we went through in order to get the get the um, get the solution. So basically, the first step that we had over here was that. <coughs> The first, let me clear this whole thing up. I will clear this whole thing up over here. And then, of course, I don't need any of this over here. But all of these things are the kind of things that you, you that you will need in physics. So it's important to understand now it's not it's not I mean it's important to understand how you solve this problem. It, that is that is very important because then you can use what you did, you can use it in a similar situation. So the first thing that we did, we Basically, we since this point was the midpoint of that line segment between these two, between the lines one and two, we just made an assumption that this line would basically intersect the line one at at alpha one beta one, alpha one beta one, alpha one beta one, and we also made the assumption that the same line segment would intersect line two at alpha 2 beta 2 at alpha 2 beta 2 so now since since this this is going to be on line 1 and this is going to be this is going to lie on, on line number 2 then of course you can put these two in these equation in these two basic equations and you will get you will get basically two equations over here for example 5 times alpha 1 minus beta 1 plus 4 is equal to 0, and 3 times alpha 2 plus 4 times beta 2 minus 4 is equal to 0. You'll get these two equations over here. And then these two equations, in these two equations, basically you, you will be able to find beta 1 and beta 2 in terms of, of course, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And... So here you have uh, you have beta one and beta two, beta here you have beta one and and beta two. In terms of in terms of alpha one and alpha two, which is not going to be very um, Of course, I, I suppose here we could have actually formed a, uh, a system of equations and we could have actually solved for alpha 1 and beta 1 and alpha 2 and beta 2. No, 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 we couldn't have done that because here you have basically four unknowns. No, we couldn't have done that. So we needed more information to basically to compensate for that for 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 basically to compensate for that or we basically um, we knew that basically this point what the, was the midpoint of these two points so we have these two points over here these two points are you have over here and this point was the midpoint of them so then of course you we could write this write these two equations so this is another step then we could write these two equations as, for example, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided by 2. The midpoint of that is basically the x-coordinate of this point 1. And we could write beta 1 plus beta 2 divided by 2 was basically this point over here, number 5. And so now here we have alpha 1 in terms of alpha 2, beta 1 in terms of beta 2. And uh, and so um, and so eventually you will get, for example, alpha one plus alpha two is something, and 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 
and then and, and just in this and and you see that over here we had alpha 2 for example in terms of beta 2 so um, so basically what we had over here was alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 okay so what we did over here basically in this in this step over here we had beta 1 and beta 2 in terms of alpha 1 and alpha 2 meaning that we had uh, we had for example we had for example beta 1 is equal to 5 times alpha 1 plus 4 and we had beta 2 is equal to for example um, 4 times 4, 4 minus 3 times alpha 2 over for example 4 this was what we what we got in this in this step and in the next step basically what we got was alpha 1 plus alpha 2 was something and 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 so uh, and beta 1 plus beta 2 was something else now over here I can instead of beta 1 I can write this this equation instead of beta 2 I can I, I have this equation and then I have alpha 1 and alpha 2 in this in this equation over here and then alpha 1 and alpha 2 in this equation over here then I can solve for alpha 1 and alpha 2 because now I have a system of equations with two unknowns or two variables and then you can go back and then use alpha 1 and alpha 2 substitute them in here find beta 1 and beta 2 and then you can find the, the equation of the line that, that, that you were looking for. Okay, so that was good. Now, what? there, there is only one question left here. So I'm, I don't want to basically... Uh, I, will, I will end this video here and we will continue in the next video.